Hi everyone and welcome back once again. Powder metallurgy is a very useful uh, manufacturing process which is in practice in variety of industries for a long time. It is a versatile process uh, that can uh, produce a solid a component or a product in net shape or near net shape starting from a loose mass of powder and therefore uh, understanding the science of uh, powder metallurgy is very important. So, the first thing that you start with in a, in a powder metallurgy process is the powder itself. So, first you need to know or you need to understand what is a powder, right? So, powder if you want to define as such, a powder uh, can be defined as a finely divided solid whose maximum dimension is less than 1 millimeter, okay? So, in a broad term that is how you can uh, define a powder. But a powder also should have a certain characteristics uh, which are listed over here uh, as you could see. And the characteristics that a powder should have are as follows. It should have a relatively high surface area to volume ratio. The powder particles exhibit behavior that is intermediate between that of solid and liquid. For example, uh, powders flow under gravity to fill containers or die cavities and in this case they behave like liquids because they are flowing and they can go to you know different places inside a mold for example, when you are molding the powder. So, like how a liquid flow the powder particles can also flow and that is why it is said that you know uh, their characteristics is in between that of solid and liquid, okay. Powders are compressible like a gas and compression of a metal powder is irreversible. That means, once you compress it or compact it, you cannot get it back to the initial condition. So, these are the typical characteristics that a powder should have apart from the fact that the dimension of powder particles or the solid which can be called a powder should be less than 1 millimeter. So, that is about the powder. Now, when you say powder metallurgy as I said in the beginning during the introduction powder metallurgy uh, is a whole manufacturing process uh, which can be used to make uh, products and components. So, powder metallurgy uh, if you want to define uh, it can be defined as the study of the processing of metal powders that involves fabrication, characterization and conversion of powders into useful engineering components, right. So, you uh, start with the powder and then you can make components or you end up with a final product, right. So, that means the powder has to go through certain steps or uh, certain processing in order for you to get a useful component or a useful product at the end of the process, okay. So, that is how uh, you can see it is listed uh, in the powder metallurgy flow chart as you could see over here. As I said, you first start with the powder and you have to process the powder to get a particular component or a particular product with, with uh, required properties. So, when you process the powder, you need certain toolings uh, which can process it and you know uh, give it a particular shape and things like that. And after that, uh, once you process the powder into a solid, you need to test its properties so that you know that whatever desired properties uh, which you wanted in a in a particular component or in a particular product uh, is there uh, in the in the final part or in the final product which is coming out at the end of the powder metallurgy process right so uh, when you 
check these properties you need to do uh, some testing also. So, that is how uh, you can see how the flow chart goes over here powder then uh, with the tooling uh, you process the powder and then uh, you want to get uh, certain properties. So, you need to test it to get to know whether those properties are achieved. Okay. So, now uh, in each of these steps you have uh, certain parameters that you need to consider, certain factors that you need to consider. For example, when you talk about the powder itself, the powder has certain properties or certain characteristics in terms of the size, the shape and the fabrication process that is being used to make these powders. And apart from that the powder also have certain properties like the microstructure, the chemistry of the powder and also the packing. Because all these parameters will decide how the processing would be because the powder has to be packed first uh, in a particular shape. right? So, how that packing would be that might depend on uh, one or more of these parameters which are listed over here like size, size shape or uh, microstructure, chemistry packing and so on. right? So, uh, before you actually start the processing uh, these factors or these parameters have to be evaluated. So, that you know you are dealing with what kind of powder and what it might lead to when you process the powder for uh, making a particular component or product. Okay. Now, uh, in the next step while you process the powder uh, as I said before also you need certain tools. For example, you have to mold the powder in a die and then it has to be compressed. right? So, in order to do that you need that die uh, the punches which will compress it and also a press uh, which can uh, apply the pressure on this loose powder and, 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 and give rise to a compact which can be further processed. Right? So, here the parameters could be like the mold when you do the molding or or the process or the toolings if you talk about uh, it will it, it can be molding, rolling or extrusion of the powder in order to give it a particular kind of shape and compact it. And on the other hand once you have the compact after either molding, rolling or extrusion you need to finally, close all the pores uh, which are there in this compact. So, that at the end you come up with a fully dense solid. right? So, that is uh, the, the final product that you need, the final product should be fully dense. And in order to achieve that you need to uh, either sinter the powder, forge it or hot press it. So, these are all high temperature process sintering, forging or hot pressing which will make sure that whatever porosity is remaining after molding, rolling or extrusion after uh, the compact is made through one of these processes. The sintering, forging and hot pressing these high temperature processes will make sure that uh, the pores are closed and uh, at the end you get a fully dense product. Okay. So, this is how uh, the powder will be processed uh, with the help of certain tools and certain processes like uh, sintering, forging or hot pressing which happens at the high temperature. Now, finally, uh, once you, you make a solid part out of it, you also look for certain properties uh, which could be any of these. For example, you look uh, for strength, you look for conductivity or you look for a particular type of microstructure which can again give rise to certain uh, type of property that you need in that particular component. And the other uh, properties that you may look for is the density as I said at the end you have to have a product or a component coming out 
from the process which should be fully dense. So, you need to evaluate and uh, measure the density and then when you talk about mechanical properties you also have to see what is the uh, ductility of the final product and other properties uh, like for example, magnetism right. So, depending on what your requirement is or what the properties that you are looking at you do the testing and evaluate those properties right. So, uh, if I have to summarize now the powder metallurgy process it starts with the powder, the powder is processed into a compact or into a particular shape which could be the near net shape also and then it is densified with the help of a high temperature process like sintering, forging or hot pressing and then once you obtain a final fully dense product, uh, you evaluate the properties uh, depending on uh, what are the requirements or what are the properties that you are looking at. Okay. So, how this uh, processing and properties are interrelated or correlated that can be understood uh, with the help of a diagram like this with the help of this tetrahedron which is known as the powder metallurgy tetrahedron where you can see in each of these vertices you have this four different uh, parameters or four different things listed. Okay. The powder that is the starting material as I said, the processing, the chemistry and the properties. Okay. So, the way uh, these uh, things are correlated you can easily uh, see it from this one uh, diagram. For example, <coughs> the powder is related to how it can be processed okay, or how easily it will be processed or whether it will be difficult to process that would depend on the characteristics of the powder. For example, the powder type and the fabrication that can influence the ease of compaction and sintering. Because what do you do while making anything out of a powder, you first compact the powder into a particular shape. So, you try and give, give it a shape in the beginning by compacting it and then you sinter that compact uh, to close all the pores and come up with a fully dense product. Okay. So, how the powder is in the beginning in terms of its type or the fabrication process uh, which is used to, to make the powder that will uh, influence the ease of compaction and sintering. Okay. So, that is how these two, this uh, powder and processing this is how uh, you know these two things are related to each other. Similarly, how the powder is processed will influence the final properties. Okay. And in between you have chemistry because chemistry also has a lot to do with uh, the processing and also the properties. If you change the chemistry of the material uh, that will also change the properties. right? So, this is how uh, these vertices are correlated to each other. This is what we also call as a structure property correlation where you you make something, you process something which will uh, give rise to a particular chemistry or a particular structure and the properties that you obtain finally that would depend on the structure. right? On the other hand, how the material is processed, the structure would depend on that and processing as I said in this case of powder metallurgy in this particular case, processing would depend on what kind of powder you start with. right? So, this is how with the help of this uh, powder metallurgy tetrahedron you can see how these four things are correlated with each other. Okay. Now, when you uh, look for the properties or you want to know uh, the chemistry, you will have to actually test it right you have to measure it then only you can know 
a particular property whether it is achieved or not in that particular compact or in that particular component which is made out of the powder. Okay. So, in order to know that you know you need to actually characterize the material which has been processed right. So, that is why characterization is at the center of this tetrahedron because for each of these that you want to know whether it is the chemistry or it is any particular property you need to actually test it and in order to test it you need to characterize it you need to measure that particular property using certain tools right. So, that is why uh, you also need to bring in the, the process of characterization here which is at the center because for each of these as I said you need to characterize. For example, if you need to know what kind of powder it is the type of powder then you need to actually see the powder under a microscope and look at the powder particles. So, that is a characterization tool in that case which you use to get to know about the powder type. Similarly, if you want to measure any property you have to test it right using a particular instrument. One may ask a question as to why powder metallurgy and why not any other process or in other words uh, what is the advantage of uh, powder metallurgy over many other manufacturing processes uh, which are available. Okay. So, let us uh, try and understand as to uh, why powder metallurgy and what will be the advantage of powder metallurgy over uh, many other uh, manufacturing processes. Why powder metallurgy? This can be understood uh, with the simple Venn diagram. Which will show up the capability of a particular process and as far as the powder metallurgy process is concerned with the help of this diagram we are going to see what are those uh, capabilities that powder metallurgy process will offer and how it is different or how it is advantageous compared to other processes. <coughs> so, this is uh, how a Venn diagram looks like and each of these circles can be associated uh, with a particular property or a particular capability. Let us say for example, this uh, first circle that you have let us say that uh, talks about the uniqueness of the process which can be in terms of uh, the material like uh, the alloys or a particular type of microstructure that one wants to produce in a particular alloy or in a particular material and a particular type of material that somebody wants let us say for example, you want composites which are combination of two or more materials. Okay. So, that can be done uh, with this process of powder metallurgy. We can also make certain alloys that means, you can have different chemistry and come up with you know different kinds of alloys. You can also tailor the microstructure and so on. So, that is the uniqueness of the process and then when you talk about any manufacturing process. Uh, the other aspects that uh, you will have to consider is of course, the economy because when you are comparing this process with any other manufacturing process uh, you also have to look at the cost whether it is cost effective or not compared to many other processes. Uh, so, uh, 
when you talk about cost, uh, you should also look at uh, the precision. and the productivity because these two are also related to the total cost of the process. For example, the rate of production or the productivity would of course, lead to you know how higher or lower cost depending on whether you have high productivity or low productivity right. And then uh, the third circle can be assigned to another capability of the process which is captive. That means, uh, this process is uh, capable of uh, processing materials which are difficult to process by other conventional processing or manufacturing routes. For example, this refractory or reactive metals. like tungsten which is a refractory metal. Refractory metal means the melting point is very high. So, it is difficult to melt. So, let us say you want to use a conventional uh, manufacturing route like casting, then you will find it difficult to melt because in casting process you have to first melt the material and then cast it and solidify it. So, since it is a refractory metal, uh, if you want to use a conventional processing or manufacturing route like casting, it is going to be difficult. But powder metallurgy can easily handle that uh, you know and overcome the difficulties that you might face uh, while using a conventional uh, manufacturing process. Similarly, if you have uh, reacting uh, reactive metals. Uh, uh, for example, uh, titanium, zirconium and uh, this kind of metals which are uh, prone to uh, oxidation if you uh, pr process them at high temperature. Anyway, you will have to process it at high temperature. right? So, these uh, kind of metals are uh, prone to oxidation or other reactions and that is why this kind of reactive metals are difficult to process by uh, conventional processing routes but powder metallurgy can easily take care of that. Okay. So, if I can elaborate on this, these are those uh, three capabilities of this powder metallurgy process uh, starting from the economy uh, which also concerns the productivity, uh, the tolerances and automations. So, powder metallurgy uh, is attractive uh, both in terms of the cost and the precision because uh, as I said uh, in the beginning it can also uh, make the product in net shape or near net shape. So, uh, your requirements for machining and things like that is much lower. So, it's, it can easily uh, make a product uh, with high precision. Other uh, manufacturing processes for example, castings uh, suffer from uh, defects like uh, segregation and there is also uh, need for machining and it is difficult to uh, maintain the tolerances. right? So, these kind of uh, difficulties uh, are not there in case of powder metallurgy and, and that is why uh, this is attractive in terms of both uh, economy, productivity and the tolerances. Moreover, uh, processing of uh, pre-alloyed powders uh, at temperature uh, below the melting point also eliminates uh, many of these difficult difficulties which are associated with high temperature processing like uh, you know this segregation, porosity and so on. Then if you talk about uh, the uniqueness. Uh, this will come in terms of a property that you are looking for or a particular type of microstructure that you are, you are looking for in the material for a particular type of property which will come out from that, that kind of microstructure. Right? Uh, 
So, property or microstructure which cannot be achieved by other methods can easily be obtained uh, by a powder metallurgy process. Okay. For example, uh, uh, porous metals uh, oxide dispersion strengthen alloys uh, which are uh, much stronger. Then sarmets uh, which is a combination of uh, ceramic and metal that is how the name is sarmet, uh, it is a combination of ceramic and metals. So, you also achieve a combination of properties of ceramics and metals in a in a single material when you combine them as a sarmet, right. So, this kind of sarmet materials can also be processed with the with the help of powder metallurgy and other uh, specialty materials for example, uh, cemented carbides uh, which are again uh, difficult to process by conventional processing routes can also be uh, processed easily by powder metallurgy. So, that is how the process is unique and when you talk about the captive uh, characteristic of this particular process, uh, it, it talks about uh, the difficult to process uh, materials or the ability of this process of powder metallurgy to handle uh, the materials which, which are difficult to process by uh, other processing routes. For example, uh, reactive or refractory metals as we talked about uh, which are uh, uh, difficult to melt okay. and since uh, you know uh, they are highly reactive and melting temperatures are very high, it is also not practical to go for melting and casting route. But powder metallurgy can easily handle that because here you uh, do it in, in solid state itself and there is no need for melting uh, to, to process this kind of materials. Moreover, uh, you can also get uh, a, a kind of material uh, which may be again uh, difficult to process by other routes. For example, these amorphous or glassy materials which are not crystalline because what happens in other processes like for example, casting when you cool the material to solidify under equilibrium conditions which is most often the case uh, during a particular process. When you cool it under equilibri equilibrium conditions, it most of the time it will, uh, it will solidify into a crystalline material. So, for some reason if you want an amorphous or a glassy material as we call them, uh, then uh, it will be difficult to use those kind of processes. But powder metallurgy, uh, if you take care of uh, some of the process parameters can also you know uh, easily handle uh, these kind of materials or easily produce this kind of materials. Okay. Then you have other factors uh, like uh, low temperature uh, processing to preserve a particular microstructure because uh, what happens when you process the material at higher temperatures, uh, the, the microstructure that you wanted in the final product may be lost. For example, if you want a very uh, fine grain uh, microstructure, right. So, uh, that fine grain microstructure may be lost if you heat it to high temperatures because of grain growth, right. So, that kind of uh, requirements can also be taken care uh, by low temperature processing that uh, powder metallurgy can do and this again adds to the attractiveness or popularity of powder metallurgy. So, you know these are the, the uniqueness or these are the characteristics of this uh, powder metallurgy process. But the biggest advantage uh, that you have in this uh, process is what you can see in this uh, junction over here, right, in this place, which is the meeting point of all these uh, three circles, right. So, in this place you have all these uh, three characteristics present. Okay. So, that means powder metallurgy can be an ideal application for making materials or making uh, components products where you can combine all these characteristics in one process itself 
So, it could be ideal applications for specialty products for example, like uh, porous tantalum capacitors and things like that because it can combine as I said all these unique characteristics of a manufacturing process. Okay. So, this is why uh, powder metallurgy is so attractive and this is why people go for powder metallurgy because of its uniqueness and how it combines all these three categories or all these three different characteristics into one single process.